Hello, I'm Victor Miller, and welcome to Keep Idaho Red Radio. And uh, this morning, this is Thursday morning, we are spending a couple of minutes with Representative Brent Crane, who is in District 13, and we're going to talk a little bit about what is expected to happen today during the special session. So we don't know exactly what will come out of today, but we're trying to get a little bit of insight on what was happening before the session began. You will obviously see in the press what happened ultimately. But welcome to KIDO, uh, 580 AM and um, 107.5 FM and KLIX in the Magic Valley. So good morning to you, uh, Representative Brent Crane. Good morning, Victor. Pleasure to be on your show today. So, Brent, let's talk a little bit about why was this special session called? So uh, we had a large surplus uh, revenue that the governor said, hey, look, we've got a, a large surplus, and I would like to do some tax relief, as well as I would like to look at lowering the uh, corporate income tax and the personal income tax rates. And then I think that we need to make an ongoing commitment to public education. And so negotiations and conversations begin to take place um, subsequent to that report coming out, and uh, that's the genesis for why we have a special session today. And why do you think it's the session is now as opposed to just waiting? We're still going to have the, is it a $2 billion surplus, something like that, $1.5 billion? So why was it the pressing to do that now as opposed to just waiting to the 2023 legislature? Any thoughts, you know, inside baseball on, on maybe why that happened? Uh, yeah, a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, you have the money and you have the ability to give the money back now in a, in a rebate, which is, is built into this bill. Secondly, um, there is a ballot initiative that will be on the November ballot uh, by a um, – really, it's a, a fairly progressive group that is pushing to raise the, the corporate income tax rate to 10.6 percent on anybody making over $250,000 and take that money, which is about $300 million, and put it into education. However, what they don't tell you is with that increase, that $300 million tax increase by Reclaim Idaho, the legislature has absolutely no control over how that money gets spent. And uh, so it was going to go directly towards, I believe it was earmarked for teachers' salaries. So the governor said, hey, look, we have an opportunity here to provide tax relief, but also we could make a commitment to education as well. But it would put the legislature in the driver's seat as to how those dollars get spent. So why does it have to happen now? Well, in order for us to be able to get that question on the ballot before the uh, voters of the state of Idaho, whether they agree with us as to the decisions that we're going to make today, that had to be done, I believe, by the 7th of September. And so today was the best day uh, in looking at schedules for different lawmakers. September 1st was the best day to do that. Um, so we will come in today. Uh, the bill will uh, lower the income tax rate, corporate and personal, from 6% down to 5.8%. It will put $400 million uh, earmarked out of the sales tax revenues ongoing for education. And it allows the legislature to determine how we spend that money. Do we want to spend it on teacher salaries? Do we want to spend it on books? Do we want to spend it on technology? Do we want to spend it on buildings? How do we want to spend that money? And that way you can allocate the money where it's needed most. Those needs may change from time to time. Also, it could be allocated for areas like school choice, or Idaho had $275 million last year in the budget of federal dollars. Well, we could take uh, this $400 million and essentially buy out the $275 million federal dollars and then the federal government has absolutely no control over how we do education in the state of Idaho. And I think that that's actually a great way to go because when you see what's happening with the U.S. Department of Education and the stuff they're beginning to push down with Title IX, um, you know, and saying, hey, guys that, that are biological males can now play in female sports, those type of things are tying back to that federal money. Well, if Idaho has the ability to fund its education system all on its own, then you're not uh, required to, to take the federal money, and therefore you don't have to apply to the federal strings. So there's three three basic aspects, and I want to we want to circle back on that. We're with Brent Crane, uh, who's a representative of District 13. Uh, we're talking to him the morning of the special session, so we don't know what's going to actually come out of this today, but we wanted to give you a little insight here on Keep Idaho Red Radio on uh, what what's happening. So the three aspects of the of this bill, right? One is the corporate tax, which in, which which decreases from six to five point eight percent, also for individuals, right? 
And uh, there's also another element you mentioned, the rebate. So can you give a little bit more details on that before we uh, circle back on the school issues? Yeah, because there is a large surplus, we're going to be able to give a rebate back between, I believe it's 300 or $600 uh, per tax filer. Uh, so they're going to get money back in their pocket. They're going to see their, their income taxes, the income tax rate lowered. And then we're going to also earmark out of the sales tax revenues $400 million on going to education. Interestingly enough, in the 2022 session, we took the corporate income tax rate and the personal income tax rate from 6.2% down to 6%. Now we're talking in this same calendar year of going from 6% to 5.8. And uh, also we're making it a flat tax. So right now there is brackets, tax brackets. If you make between X and Y, you pay this percentage. And we're saying, no, it's just going to be 5.8% across the board. Uh, once you make $2,600 or above, you'll be paying 5.8% uh, on, on your, your, your taxes. I really wish the federal government would do the same thing. Um, you know, if the state of Idaho can survive on a 5.8%, I wish the, the federal government would do the same thing. But, again, it speaks to the prudence that we have with regards to fiscal management here in the state of Idaho, but also planning to make sure that, that we're taking care of education at the same time. Now, I, I believe that there's also the other aspect of the rebate is that you may get a certain percentage of your 2020 taxes back. That's a minimum amount that you're going to get back is the three to six hundred dollar level so let's um let's just talk about the education side um uh, just a little bit more so the reclaim idaho was going to basically increase taxes really across the board we've done some analysis on that and what's interesting is that it's kind of been represented that it's going to be like a tax the rich kind of scheme but the numbers that, that i've run personally show that the highest tax rate will be paid is roughly between those who make three or four thousand dollars would see over 10% ta uh, tax rate in that bracket. So I think there's a little bit of a misconception of actually how that works. Second thing, it's actually new tax dollars. Um, so it's actually increasing taxes. And this pro this proposal basically does not increase taxes, uh, provides more money, and you said it has some strategic value as well. So is is there anything else about that, about that aspect, that $410 million that we should know about? And also I've heard that they're thinking about like $80 million being earmarked to like career tech as well. So talk about what does that mean, career tech? Not everyone goes to college, right? So talk about that aspect as well. So two parts to that question. First, about the $400 million. Um, it is important that the legislature have flexibility with regard to funding. Um, because whenever you begin to earmark and say, hey, it's going there and that's the only place it's going to go, needs change over time and we are a fast growing state and so our needs change over time so that's what's important about the governor's proposal is it allows us the flexibility um you know i've had people even on the on the floor today as we've been talking to say well i'd support the bill if it went towards school choice or i'd support the bill if it did this or if it did that that's up to the legislature's purview how they want to spend the 400 million dollars we get to make that de that decision in the 2023 session all he's doing is saying hey I want to make sure out of this bucket of money, we have, we have different buckets of money that come in to fund state government. You have corporate income tax rates. You have personal income taxes. You have sales taxes. He's saying of the sales tax revenue, I want $400 million of that earmarked to go into education. Legislature, you decide how you want to spend it, but that's what I want to do. Then with regards to the $80 million for career tech, we are finding more and more employers coming and saying, I don't need a kid with a college education. I need a kid with certain life skills to come and work in this trade. And so it's putting money back into those trade programs. We are seeing an increase in, in demand from employers that we want to see these kids come out of high school ready to go. In fact, over in my neck of the woods, HVAC contractor uh, here in the Treasure Valley is partnering with a local high school and training those kids while they're in high school so they're getting class credit but they're also learning a trade they're coming out making between 25 and 30 dollars an hour right out of high school so remind everybody today so what is going to happen today versus what will actually be executed in the next session so parse that for us so what we what will happen today is uh, i predict that the bill will pass the governor had enough co-sponsors in the house and the senate he's going to obviously sign it because it's his bill but i predict that the bill will pass today and will become law. That law then says, okay, look, we're going to send rebates back to individuals. Um, we are going to lower their tax rate for 2023. 
And also, we're going to earmark and say $400 million is going over here in the education fund, and $80 million is going for career technical. That's what will happen today. Then when you get in the 2023 session, we will determine how that $80 million gets spent and how that four hundred. million Ten million dollars get spent. You know, where do you want to where do you want to spend the money, and, and how do you want to allocate those resources? Well, we've been speaking with uh, Representative Brent Crane, district. He represents District Thirteen. He is uh, a clear headed voice uh, for the Republican Party, and we're just so grateful that you spent some time with us today. And uh, you're listening to Keep Idaho Red Radio on KIDO five eighty AM one hundred seven point five FM, and on KLIX in the Magic Valley. And we'll be right back after this. 